Dungeon Crawler Carl is a fantasy lit RPG series that was thrust onto my radar by the goblins here due to its rather stellar performance with its most recent release in the latest fantasy awards, taking home best book from the fan audience vote and best cover. So I went on back to the first book and picked up Matt Dineman's Dungeon Crawler Carl. The apocalypse will be televised. While I do consider myself fairly well read within the sci-fi fantasy space, lit RPG is a subgenre that certainly are unfamiliar waters to me. I've dabbled in it. Every other excursion I have taken here hasn't necessarily hooked me. Dungeon Crawler Carl, though, if any series is gonna do it, seems to be the one. I, I did record my typical I'm halfway through spoiler-free thoughts, but unfortunately that recording recording is unusable due to technical difficulties, so I'm going to have to do my spoiler-free thoughts having finished the book. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to like pretend to not have finished it for a re-recording. That's weird. But keeping it spoiler-free, what are the initiating incidents here? What is Dungeon Crawler Carl? Well, our titular Carl is living a pretty typical life in America. He's a retired veteran, I believe, and just broke up with his significant other after he discovered some serial infidelity. One night, he is just chillin', but the cat that he is still taking care of because his girlfriend has not gotten back from a vacation to take gets outside. So Carl quickly goes outside not putting on proper winter gear, still in boxers and Crocs with a leather coat, as the apocalypse begins and everyone who is still inside is crushed. The portals open and he is invited into the dungeon crawling game. The game itself, as you can tell from the slogan on top, is an intergalactic televised event that really goes into maximum detail and depth with the potential of this premise, and I really do appreciate that about Dungeon Crawler Carl. It's not obviously like a Malazan level of lore, but Matt Dineman has had so much fun absolutely clearly thinking through all the various consequences and background politics that would run an intergalactic show like this. It's really interesting. And tonally, I absolutely agree with the review that is on the back of of this book. It is pitch perfect. There are flaws I will get into, but I had a blast reading this book. I still think I'm fairly safe here from just cover type spoilers, but the cat as well joins Carl throughout the game and I think pretty obviously ends up with the ability to talk so that dungeon crawler Carl has a phenomenal animal companion that reaches true peaks of cat comedy. And it's a fun start, but it's probably the clunkiest part of the book. And as, again, someone who's admittedly not super familiar with lit RPGs, there was already a sense of familiarity or redundancy, if I'm being harsh, in learning the rules for this world. While DCC is going a bit more in depth, I definitely felt myself going like, I've seen that before, I've seen that before. And for really avid lit RPG fans, I imagine that's just something you have to get used to, pay attention enough to learn the nuances of this one versus another one, but under the skeletal structure will be very similar. For some readers, that'll be a bug, but I imagine for many fans of the genre, it's a feature. They like that. And the cat situation I mentioned for this initial premise, it walks obvious jokes, but you end up really latching onto the relationship between these two because Carl does have personality, but he is certainly kept within the range of an everyman so that you as the reader can really try and put yourself into Carl's Crocs. And early on with successful jokes, like a meth llama having to be fought, it really hit the palate different. I've recently been talking about Paul Verhoeven in my real life quite a bit from just strange coincidences, but recently here on the channel due to that Zack Snyder uh, quote that I felt like displayed a misunderstanding of what made Paul Verhoeven actually enjoyable. Dungeon Crawler Carl, I would be shocked if Matt Dineman is not a fan of Verhoeven's work because all of this setting, this huge intergalactic televised apocalypse that is there for profit is a well-realized satirization of how modern entertainment can blur into exploitation. The whole situation has this gory, over-the-top comedy that really does remind me of a Total Recall, a Robocop, and I especially think if you're a fan of Orconomics as well, Dungeon Crawler Carl, even if you don't like lit RPGs, should be on your TBR. The biggest weaknesses, though, for the spoiler-free section 
option. Just this book's structure, not what I see the series structure building to be, building to be. And while the middle of the book really flowed well, especially for how disjointed some of the events could be, it felt natural for the quest Carl was going through. The beginning was clunky and the ending just ended. It very much so harkened back to uh, Bobbyverse, which is a series notoriously that, that books just kind of go, and we're done here, there. It's not really like everything is concluded and then the next book is gonna take away some of the grander questions, the unsolved plot lines. Dungeon Crawler Carl very much so just felt like that's enough for volume one. Volume two, though I want to say for a series wide structure, having this increased level of difficulty, the way Carl is having this building relationship with the game itself, I'm sure a million reviewers have already said this, but the game is a character here. It actually does speak to Carl. Adding in interviews, there is a momentum that is absolutely, I think, going to continue to feel more hostile, faster paced, while also more dangerous as I get further in the series. And that is such a draw to keep going, even if the ending isn't really laying the correct hooks to pull me into the next book. And the ones that are put there are interesting enough, but kind of did just feel like, oh, I gotta do something here for book two. Okay, and then end. And then one criticism I thought I would have, but I ended up retracting, is I could be wrong, we read this once, but the start of the book just begins with three dead women. And I, I started having a red flag come up where I was like, oh no, is this some incel shit? Like, it's not. I want to clearly say Dungeon Crawler Carl is not. There is just one early boss battle and a couple of dead women early on that made me be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you, you gotta understand, being somebody who does read just like random shit online sent to me, I often come across stuff that's like, huh, X. I'm happy to say that that red flag does get laid down. It has a mentality of everyone's on an even playing field and I'm gonna make irreverent jokes across the board. To I, I kept being reminded of gremlins. It's just in that vein, very 80s. Something about DCC to me kept making me think this was set in the 80s when it's clearly not. I don't think Matt Dineman is trying to make grand political statements and instead he is trying to just take shots at the culture we all live in today. The gross extents we go to through fame, followers, what we're willing to do to our bodies to try to stay young even though aging is a perfectly natural and beautiful process. And the fact that yes, currency in modern world is attention. It is regardless of of what you're doing, just having that sponsor potential, whatever it is, on you. And like any good satire, it manages to do that while sustaining a consistent set of rules for its own world. The joke never overrides the plot. And better than other lit RPGs I have read, I don't know, I can't say for like the grand state of the genre, just from my limited experience, DCC manages to balance the grind that you need to get through for leveling up and your character to believably be able to match as they continue through their journey. Uh, far better than I've experienced before. It's there, there is a grind portion, but it's often just either hand waved away or, su or subsidized with great character moments. Before I give my final rating, I wanna tell a really quick funny story. On my way down to Nashville to visit my dad recently, I brought Dungeon Crawler Carl to read. And I know a ton of people have told me to do the audiobook. It's only on Audible and I got rid of my Audible subscription. I'm sorry, and I'm really enjoying reading it. So I think this will be how I consume Dungeon Crawler Carl. But I open this up on the plane and directly next to me is a very old man. I'm not talking he maybe experienced Vietnam. I'm talking this guy experienced World War II old. And him being a nice old man, he asked me what I was reading and I wasn't sure how to explain. Uh, it's about a man taken into a real world video game wearing boxers and Crocs fighting in an apoc- I, I just wasn't, I don't know. I wasn't really wanting to engage and I was tired and I wanted to read my book. So I just told him, uh, it's like a new Lord of the Rings. And he understood that. And that was the end of the conversation. So I just want you to know, and you can quote me into saying, Dungeon Crawler Carl, a new Lord of the Rings. And I am so tempted to make that the title of this video. I don't know if I have the balls to, but it would be so funny to say, TCC, the new Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Overall though, for the first book for Dungeon Crawler Carl, I'm gonna give it a really solid seven out of 10. It's not entirely for me, but what it does 
do has few faults and I think will be so much fun for people who aren't trying to look for the next big, epic, thought-provoking fantasy series and instead want something that is satirical, funny, heartfelt, has a relationship dynamic at the center of it that makes up for some fine character work. And in terms of pacing, is just going to be bringing you probably the most jokes per minute that actually do land uh, than I've probably experienced in the last couple of years. It's the funniest book I've read in a while. Oh, the Orconomics. It and Orconomics are neck and neck for a joke if you like take in quantity and quality. But let's go ahead and talk spoilers for Dungeon Crawler Carl in three, two, one. Get out if you haven't read it. Get on, get! Princess Donut. The obvious fan favorite character, I think. I might stop reading the series if Donut ever gets harmed in like an actual out of the game type way. I know there's like some kind of setup happening for like, oh, Donut lured Carl out. And so maybe there's some kind of connection between her and the game as there is with Agatha. That's like the final hook that's put in that is interesting, but it definitely did just feel like, oh, uh, time before the next floor. This is where this first book's gonna end. Uh, here's the mystery I'm hiding. Like, I don't know, it was a little abrupt but successful. Like I am actually really curious where that's gonna go. And I find myself insanely invested in like, yeah, the, the story of Carl and Donut is wonderful. I like everything they did with the old people and all that, but the actual like funding of the game and these different companies and the interviews, that's the best part of the story for me so far. I love that. And I hope it continues to be a really strong vein that is mined throughout the rest of the books. The commentary around Carl and the effect he is having on a wider space. And I stand by what I said, like Carl isn't the deepest guy. He's funny, he's certainly got his enemies and he's a kind of an everyman, but a good version of that. His relationship with Princess Donut though is like so well set to have a lot of range and potential conflict in the future. Like the whole potentially him catnapping <laughs> princess because he actually really loves it angle, really like dug in some like, oh, this guy, one, he's more of a softy than he comes across. And two, he really, even back in the day, did care about this cat. How important was this cat in his life? Was it kind of his best friend in some ways? I don't know, that hasn't directly been answered. Carl certainly isn't taking a ton of time to think about name of name of name of name of name person he lost, but that would slow down the book. So I think that's kind of the right choice. I, my overall feeling is Carl was a bit of a loner and this cat meant a lot to him. And now that he's able to talk to this cat, it is rapidly becoming the best friend he maybe ever had. I mean, living through a ton of traumatic events with someone or some cat would do that. And I was so afraid, especially in the first third of the book, that the cat jokes were going to get old, but they don't. And at the very end, introducing another animal companion, this Velociraptor with, you know, feathers, because that's what Velociraptors have. This Dungeon Crawler Carl, not only the new Lord of the Rings, more scientifically accurate Velociraptors than the new Jurassic Park. F me. <laughs> it took jokes that could have gotten stale and added and refreshed them, added a little zest. And I, I want to stress again, the delight is in the details. Matt Dimon, he's really a talented world builder. And I was confused when the first boss fight made me sad because it's clearly this person going through pain who has just been horrifically morphed by the world, which is in itself a character. And Carl having to fight it, I was like, this feels mean. Like, I don't like watching this person get murdered, but that's a continued theme. Like, yes, there are some fights where Carl's just like, brah, like I won and that wasn't really humanoid. But even when he kills goblins, he fucking massacres a bunch of babies without realizing it and feels horrible. And we know the goblins had their own goals and ambitions. So there's like this emotional through line that's retaining the humanity to a game that could easily just obliterate any and all uh, emotional investment in the other creatures. And I guess you could have that version of this story where we're able to just kind of not think about that. But the fact that we are being forced to think about the Verhovian bizarreness that allowed this world to exist keeps it so that I'm not entirely comfortable with what Carl's doing all the time. It's not profound, but it's an additional tone to the story that elevates it. And I also wanna mention from there, the combat, while I was kind of conflicted at the beginning, the way it's handled both in like the OP-ness of charisma being brought into setting up combat and traps and how Carl is working against the game at times, so well done. It's not traditional fantasy combat because he's not getting into like long sword duels, but we're watching an everyday guy who's, who's leveling up his explosive explosives, learn to use bombs well, 
and that's cool. I do just wish that morose feeling of the world just ended wasn't used as a light seasoning. If we're going to get into the horrors of him decimating a bunch of babies now, he, Carl's hardly thought back to how much the, his home, everything is gone. And I understand that you could say that's the trauma of what he's going through, he hasn't had time, but even the rivalry he has with the people who, the explosive of him accidentally killing that kid, it's like a gong moment of, oh shit, there's real emotion here. But then that makes me wonder like, but what about all the emotion of like, you know, Manhattan's gone. With Carl's intelligence stat not being super high and his ability to do surprisingly well in these interviews. Not only the first, but the second one where he's being challenged by this orc guy. Uh, I believe the hidden wisdom stat for him has got to be quite high. It's kind of stupid, but his working with the older people and trying to be the hero there. I think Carl's a better guy than I am, because I'm not going to lie, if I was managing to barely get by in this dungeon and I saw a bunch of people needing help who, if I'm being real, like, you're not gonna make it through this game. I would advise them stay in the safe room and try and get a quick, easy death because I do not believe uh, they will get deep enough to get any kind of good offer. There's already been all this ominous talk of like the offers they give you are kind of curses. My advice to them would be like, find a way to die quick and painless. That's horrific to say, but would you rather that or torn to pieces by like a bunch of goblins who are going to like, I don't know, eat you? I don't, ah, like my, if I was someone who could not defend themselves, who made it in this game, I, that's a horrific, ah, God, ah, I'm sorry I brought that up. I would do my best to save them. I would fight for them to get to a safe room and get them in a safe room and then protect them for as long as I could. Ah, God, Carl, you're a better man than me, shit. And then there is these mentor characters, the former Birdman, whose name I can't ever think I said right. Mor I just called him Moretti in my head. That's not even close. And Zev are clearly going to be our doorways into the wider, you know, political angle and the tragedy of the former Birdman. I'm waiting to hit me like a haymaker. His obvious hatred of the interview host and her being his mentor, like it's all set up to have these gut punches that I think will start really focusing more on the horror before Carl. And uh, maybe in hindsight, like you always have to keep in mind, I'm reviewing this from perspective of book one. Maybe in hindsight, after I finish more Dungeon Crawler Carl books, I'll appreciate that those things were set up and not paid off here. Because in the grander structure of the series, that will be better. Because I do want to compliment this on, despite the clunky start and kind of just abrupt ending, the, the flow of this is wonderful. You can just sit down and in two or three sittings, not realize you're going to get through this till it's done. I was disappointed when my plane landed Landed in Nashville. I was excited to see my dad, but I was annoyed because I was right in the middle of the uh, bomb trap for the elemental. And I was like, oh, I don't want to stop. I want to see how this is going to go. Yeah, that's my full thoughts on Dungeon Crawler Carl, the first lit RPG to make me go, I'm going to finish that. Uh, and someone please, for the love of God, define the difference between progression fantasy and lit RPG in the comments for me. I think Tell me if I'm wrong. Progression fantasy does have a lot of the same leveling rules. It just doesn't have a literal built-in game. And so someone levels up in a clear way, but it wouldn't have the actual built-in game that BCC does or many lit or other lit RPGs. Is that the difference? I think that's the difference. But this has just been your latest book review here on the channel. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Ad rates have just been atrocious here on YouTube for a while. So anyone who can just throw a buck over at the Patreon to watch with an ad block or even guilt-free, that'd be amazing. Anyway, have a good one, y'all. Bye!